channel. So today's video is going to be all about how I fake a flawless complexion while having cystic acne and redness and hyperpigmentation and large pores and just all that not so fun stuff. And just essentially how I get my skin as close to looking like I don't have acne as I possibly can basically. This video is kind of going to be like a foundation routine but it's a little bit more in depth. I do talk a little bit about skincare and stuff like that and I also show you guys my kind of like highlighting, contouring, blush routine as well. If you are new to my channel or if this is the first video of mine you are seeing, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe down below. It really helps me out and of course give this video a thumbs up too if you do find it helpful. But yeah, as most of you guys already know, I talk about my acne a lot on my channel and I just get a ton of questions about like foundations and like what kind of products I use and everything. So I thought I would do this video to help some of you guys out because I know a lot of you guys out there struggle with acne just like me. If you guys want to see how I achieve a flawless complexion or flawless skin with makeup, then just go ahead and keep on watching. So I think because I have acne, everyone automatically assumes my skin is flaky and dehydrated and I have lots of dry patches, but I actually take really good care of my skin despite having acne. Regular exfoliation and hydration is the key. Exfoliating with acne can be quite tricky though because you don't want to spread bacteria around or irritate any breakouts, so I opt for this cleanser from Peter Thomas Roth. This cleanser uses chemical exfoliants, so there's no actual granules or scrubby bits in this cleanser, but it still sweeps away dead skin cells using glycolic acid. A few times a week, I'll also use my Clarins Hydro Quench Mask. I've talked about this plenty of times before, but this just keeps my skin hydrated and plump, and it is amazing before applying makeup. So my favorite thing lately has been my Banish Pore Eraser, which is this super funky device that kind of looks like a metal paint roller for your face. This is the best thing ever if you have cystic acne because you actually store this in the freezer and it's meant to mimic an ice facial. It reduces the redness, pain, and swelling of acne and also helps to close up and tighten your pores. I have been using this nonstop recently and I'm in love, so I'll have more info on this in the description bar in case you are curious. So after that, I will apply my moisturizer. I really like Caudalie moisturizers because they just seem to work extremely well underneath makeup. And then eye cream is a total must for me. This particular one from Bobbi Brown actually has a built-in primer for underneath your concealer. And using eye cream is just a great habit to get into as early as possible. Believe me, your skin will thank you for it later. And it's always best to let your skincare absorb for a little bit first because this will give you the best final results. When I want my skin to look extra flawless, I always choose a blurring and perfecting primer because I do have some noticeable pores in my T-zone and some rough texture on my cheeks as well. And I know I don't have particularly dark circles or anything, but I like to use an under eye corrector because it just brightens up my face and makes me look more awake. So I just apply the corrector in an inverted triangle formation because this will create the illusion of light hitting the center of your face and this hides puffiness or a hollow sunken appearance in that area. Something new that I've been doing is using a yellow corrector on my nose because this is where my face is the most red and that redness always seems to show through no matter what I do. If you have fair skin and green correctors aren't cutting it for you, I'd recommend trying a yellow tone instead because it tends to work better for fair to light complexions. As some of you already know, my foundation of choice lately has been the Becca Ultimate Coverage Complexion Cream. Having acne and wanting to avoid cakey skin, I try to minimize the amount of layers I apply to my face as much as possible, and this foundation has hands down the best coverage of anything I've tried, so it allows me to skip a ton of extra spot concealing or heavy setting powders. As you can see, this foundation just completely erases and obliterates any redness or blemishes on my skin. Today I'm applying with the Beauty Blender because this dabbing motion will help smooth out your skin if you do have any flaky or dry patches. I do like to buff this foundation in as well though since I don't really have the problem of dry skin being kicked up by a buffing motion. Extra tip if you have textured skin, you can take a wedge sponge or even an old beauty blender and tear it in half so you're left with this little rough chunk of sponge and you can actually dab foundation on with this and the uneven texture will work into any little grooves on your skin such as large pores or acne scars and it will give your skin a more smooth and even appearance. Then I'm just concealing my eye area and I'm blending this out with the Beauty Blender once again. My biggest tip for applying concealer if you are prone to creasing is to finish off by blending the concealer inwards towards your tear duct. That way your Beauty Blender will pick up any excess product that shouldn't be there instead of just swiping it into little expression lines which will inevitably crease. 
And I also just bring that excess product up onto my lid to conceal any discoloration and veins so I have a nice even area to apply my eyeshadow. And then I'm doing my standard concealing on the center of my face. Once again, this just draws light to the center of your face to create the illusion of a slightly longer, more symmetric facial structure. And then I'm just spot concealing. To be honest, I typically don't do this with this foundation, but I included this just to show what I use when I do spot conceal if I have a particularly dark breakout that's still showing through because I get a lot of questions on my favorite concealer and things like that. And blending that out with the Beauty Blender once again because it's fast and let's face it, the Beauty Blender is queen. To set my eye area, I'm mixing together two different shades, one a pale banana powder and the other a more vanilla powder. I find if I just use the yellow tone powder, it looks a little unnatural because I am so fair, so the more vanilla shade kind of balances that out and neutralizes it, while still maintaining that bright and awake kind of look. To set the rest of my face, I'm using the Bare Minerals Mineral Veil, which is kind of a translucent powder, but it has a slight pink tinge to it to give a really subtle, soft glow to your entire face. I'm taking a very fluffy brush and lightly tapping this all over. You don't want to your setting powder because it might disturb the coverage of your foundation and kind of move things around. And I also just set my lids and brow area at this point as well. I did a very natural makeup look this day so I'm using this very light matte Dior bronzer on a fluffy brush and just lightly dusting this along the outer areas of my face to add some warmth and dimension. For your cheek products, if you have acne in those areas, it's very important to stick with smooth buttery textures. You want to avoid anything frosty or with crazy chunky glitter but a soft satiny finish actually looks really beautiful on the skin. I'm not a fan of all matte finishes because it can make your skin look a little bit dull and dead in my opinion so don't be afraid of a little bit of sheen in your face products even if you do have acne. And you'll notice I do this after every step, but I just take the same brush that I use for my face powder with no additional product and blend out the edges so I'm not left with any harsh lines. For the most realistic contour, I'm using a more cool tone taupe powder and applying this to the hollows of my cheeks and I'm always blending upwards. Since I've already placed that little bit of bronzer along my cheeks, my contour blends out really effortlessly and naturally. You might also notice that I kind of curve the end of my contour. This just looks more natural on me personally because I have very prominent apples on my cheeks and just rounder cheeks in general. Then I'm just slightly contouring my forehead, temples, underneath my bottom lip, my nose just slightly, and my chin a little bit as well. I'm using one of these Too Faced Love Flush blushes. I have raved about these so much already and this palette is still available on Too Faced.com for those of you who are wondering. I'm applying my blush on the apples of my cheeks and sweeping that back up towards my temples. I like to go pretty heavy handed with blush but it does get blended out a little bit when I apply my highlight. You want to make sure you don't bring your blush in too close to your nose because it can end up looking quite clownish if you aren't careful. And to top everything off, I am applying my favorite Laura Mercier highlight. Once again, try to stick with smoother highlights like this one or the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders for the best results if you are really concerned with texture. I'm applying this generously to the tops of my cheekbones, the bridge of my nose, my cupid's bow, my forehead, and also my chin for a very fresh faced and glowy look. everything that I do when I want my skin to look as flawless as it possibly can. I know that's a lot of steps, but that's just my personal preference. Of course, you don't have to do as in-depth of a routine if you don't want to. That is just what works for me, but if you do have similar skin to me, you might like some of these products as well, or like some of the kind of tips and tricks that I use when applying my foundation and my face products. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and once again, I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did, and of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also, be sure to check me out on Twitter and Instagram. Instagram, and I will talk to all of you guys in my next video. Bye guys!
Yeah, they're just green with little corgis wearing bandanas on them and they're so cute. For those of you who don't know, corgis are my favorite type of dog and I want a corgi so bad right now. But I have to wait a while before my boyfriend and I actually get a puppy.